We have two leaders to feature one of our most successful brands and programs ever, the Texas Superstar Program. So I want to welcome Dr. Brent, Brent Pemberton, Professor and Regents Fellow at the Texas A&M AgriLife Research and Extension Center in Overton, as well as Dr. Larry Stein, Associate Head, Professor and Extension Horticulturalist, Department of Horticultural Sciences. So, for anybody who may not know about the Superstar Program, enlighten them. Well, the Texas Superstar Program actually started back in the 1980s, and so it's been around for quite a while, but ever since the beginning, this program has been a partnership between research and extension. That's how it was originally envisioned. Um, briefly, the, the program has groups of us that test uh, plants across the state at different locations. Uh, these are minimal input trials with no pesticides um, and that sort of thing. And then when we find broadly adapted plants, we do a marketing promotion. And the fact that we do a marketing promotion brings in the, really the third part of the triangle on the partnership, which is industry. Because without a good supply of the plants, we can't really do a marketing promotion. Because one of the problems that has always been around in ornamental horticulture is uh, you go out, you write an article, you promote a plant, and then everybody runs to the garden center to buy it, and it's not there. And that's a problem for everybody, from the consumers all the way to the producers. And so the, it was designed to help with that, that sort of a problem. So basically, we end up with the testing program um, finding these very reliable, top-performing plants. Um, we have an adequate supply. But in addition, we also want to find plants that can be economically grown and efficiently grown by producers. In other words, they have to be able to grow a plant that looks good in a container, that can go in a truck to be shipped to retail. Um, we've had lots of plants over the years that have failed out of the program just because they don't look good in a five-gallon pot or a one-gallon pot or whatever. And so anyway, also the plants that we find have a, a marketing hook. Um, for example, with Vinca, we didn't find just a, a, a new pretty color. We found a group that are disease resistant. And, and that, so that's also a very important aspect of this program is to find that extra little hook um, that a lot of these things have. Um, the, the promotions, we have four major testing sites. Um, they're in, in the College Station area. We also have up where I am in Overton also in the uh, San Antonio Uvalde area, and then also out in Lubbock um, on the High Plains. And so that's where we do uh, most of the testing. The first Texas Superstar was actually in 1989. Um, it was the Texas Blue on it. And at that time, the, uh, the program was called the Coordinated Education and Marketing Assistance Program which was quite a mouthful, and so by the late 90s, um, they came up with the phrase Texas Superstar, the logo was created and, and trademarked, and, um, and so everything then, all the way from day one from the Blue Bonnet was considered a Texas Superstar promotion. And so, um, I also, I wanted to mention everyone that's on the board, and I'm gonna look at my list here just to make sure that I don't leave anybody out, but, um, Myself and Greg Grant are up in the Overton area to you know, coordinate the trials up there. We've got Mike Arnold and Tim Davis and Dan Leinberger here on campus um, that run the trials here and also provide administrative support. We've got uh, Russ Plowman and Cynthia McKinney out at uh, Texas Tech that, that run the trials out there. And then we've also got David uh, Rodriguez and uh, Larry Stein who work in the San Antonio Uvalde area and interact to, uh, to different degrees. And then I guess I'll say one thing about the, the funding of the program is with the development of the logo, we also had the idea of uh, licensing that logo to be used on plant tags. And recently it's also, we've had producers that were interested in putting that logo on pots. And so we get, we get a little bit of a royalty from each one of, from the use of that logo. And that logo is not necessarily on a specific tag. It could even be on an office or a um, Lowe's tag, for example. Um, and you'll see all the, the things that Lowe's puts on their tags, but that way the, the growers only have to put one tag in the plant. And, and, but then you'll find that Texas Superstar logo on there. And then the, the pots, uh, I think a lot of the retailers have seen the value in using um, the logo and a branded type plant. 
And in fact, uh, Marcos and, and Charlie Hall worked on some, uh, getting some information about that and showed that the consumers are willing to pay more for a branded plant. And so we now have retailers that actually see the value in using two, the logos twice on one individual plant, and that's, which is great for us, but it's also great for them. So. So one of the challenges of these plants is we've known, extension horticulturists have known a long time about a lot of plants you can grow. Take the Texas Blue Bonnet. It's a weed, right? Who can't grow a weed? Well, when you take it to the nurserymen, though, when you plant the seed, they don't come up. So they had to do the research to figure out how to grow nursery plants. Soak the seed one hour in concentrated sulfuric acid. Perfect germ. So, I mean, that was the first step in growing nursery plants. So that was a partnership of farm, like Brent said, with research, extension, and the nursery people. Like Brent says, we have to have nursery people to grow the plants after we have them. If we don't, it's pretty useless. One of the things we've done, though, is we've incorporated the county horticulturists into the program. Uh, before we get ready to do these uh, promotions, we will grow test plants. And so the agents will have these test plants two to three years ahead of time. And so when it comes time for the promotion, they know all about the plant that we're gonna promote. And uh, utilizing the extension way, we also utilize volunteers. We do advanced training for uh, volunteers to tell them about these plants. So not, not only is it, is it extension promoting the plants, but we also have our volunteers doing that as well. Also, we had some really pretty pictures to show you, Susan. <laughs> I'm uh, imagining them in my but, mind. <laughs> but, but we have brochures. So you have all these, all these pictures, you know, of all these pretty plants. And, you know, people want pictures. They want brochures. Well, you know the cost of publishing stuff like that got astrom astronomical. And so you put it on a website so everybody prints it themselves. Well, we ran into a great partnership with the uh, Texas Department of Agriculture. They came in and said, hey, we want to publish this. And so they took our material and they put it in a brochure. We're on our third one now. It's their most popular brochure that they hand out. And so that's been a really, really great partnership with TDA. One last thing is a lot of people say, well, man, they do three to four plants every year. Pretty soon they're going to run out of plants. But a wise old plantsman said, you got to keep looking down, boys. You can't be looking in the clouds. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, I just want to sum this segment up by saying your department head, Dr. Leinberger, is a huge proponent of the Texas Superstar program. You might have caught that the chancellor mentioned yesterday his prediction that we would have some kind of healthy Texas food label, and, and we've indeed been working on that, and we, we pulled Dr. Leinberger into a meeting to talk about, and others, about this opportunity, and he said, Superstar is the model that y'all have set the model for that can be replicated between research and extension as we move forward and, and tackle some of these other challenges and opportunities that we have before us. So uh, we should all be growing superstars in our gardens, right? Absolutely. Thank all you. All right. Thank you very much.